dear friends, we arrive at Easter by way of a 40-day journey of devotion we call Lent. And this Lent we had our usual events. There was the rite of election for those about to be received in the church at Easter, Easter Vigil. We were called to the Lenten missions, both on New Providence and Grand Bahama, in person after a break due to the pandemic. The midday biblical reflections added to our opportunities for spiritual growth during this Lent. And now we arrive at the celebration of Easter itself. This is the foundation of our faith. This is the very source of the strength and the hope that is within us. From the liturgy of Easter Sunday, we have words from the Acts of the Apostles where Peter reports how Jesus went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, yet God raised him on the third day. That is a basic, a fundamental, even primitive expression of our Christian faith. It is the bedrock upon which we place all our hope. Easter is the foundation of our hope. It is the foundation upon which we build all our values. It is the cornerstone for all the meaning and purpose and motivation for good that is ours in this life. It is the source of the expectation we have for the fullness of life of which we have only hints and shadows in this mortal existence. In Easter, we celebrate what Peter was speaking about when he says, God raised him on the third day. We celebrate the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, nothing less than that. We share in the resurrection by our very own baptism. Sharing in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ is the way we understand our baptism. As St. Paul says, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in the newness of life. And continuing that same thought, the second reading for Easter Sunday, which is taken from Colossians, says this, If then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Living in the newness of life and seeking what is above indicate life in the light of the resurrection. Let us remember that at the beginning of Lent, in our preparation for Easter, we were invited to undertake a journey of conversion. The words of the prophet Joel from Ash Wednesday were very striking and very instructive as well. It is well for us to keep them in mind. The prophet Joel says this to us, Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts, not your garments, and return to the Lord your God. For gracious is he, slow to anger, rich in kindness, unrelenting in punishment. Perhaps he will again relent and leave behind him a blessing. Rend your hearts, not your garments, says Joel. And these words evoke those words from the first book of Samuel, which says, Not as man sees, does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. The call to conversion at the beginning of Lent, and the call to live in the newness of life at the start of the Easter season, remind us of who we are and what we ought to be doing. 
Paul reminds us that we are to be dead to sin and alive for God in Christ Jesus. From time to time, we all find ourselves on intimate terms with sin in one form or another. We need to be reminded that sin has personal consequences for us. More than that, living in a community, as we all do, sin has social consequences as well. Our selfishness, our dishonesty, our unfaithfulness, our prejudice, all have consequences which reach beyond us. And these consequences have effects within the community in which we live. Indeed, they impact the quality of our life together. When we steal, someone has to pay for it in one way or another. If we are rude or disrespectful, someone is offended by it. Indeed, our sinful actions have effects beyond ourselves. Likewise, the good we do has effects beyond ourselves. An act of kindness, a word of encouragement, or challenge, or even a loving rebuke, when necessary, may each have an effect beyond our expectations. The bad and the good in us affect those around us. Now, as we made our Lenten journey, there were those making another kind of journey. I speak here of the migrants in the thousands, fleeing hardship in their homeland and desperately seeking a better way of life for themselves. Some of them are fleeing circumstances of social disorder and human degradation that we could hardly imagine and would never ever tolerate. Many of them, willingly or unwillingly, end up on our shores. Surely we, as a small nation, cannot absorb all these immigrants. Certainly our territorial sovereignty must be respected and our immigration laws must be enforced. At the same time, however, we must treat the immigrants in our midst with charity, compassion, dignity, respect, and understanding. Anything less would be a profound contradiction of our own humanity as Bahamians and of our obligations of our faith as Christians. Surely our sovereignty must be respected and our laws must be enforced. All this while treating immigrants as human beings like ourselves. This is not easy, but it is the standard which our humanity and our faith demand that we hold ourselves to. We are reminded on this very special feast that we were indeed buried with Christ through baptism in his death so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in the newness of life. Again, we are reminded, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at God's right hand. Think of what is above. Our task is to affect those around us for the good, always. In that way, we build our community. The foundation for our values, our meanings, our hope, and our community building is our Easter faith. Easter continues our call to conversion. It is our call to goodness. The Easter proclamation declares, Jesus Christ, our King, is risen. With him rose all our hope, with him rose our desire to carry on, despite all the distractions and disappointments and doubt which may encircle us in the course of any given day. Easter is above all a joyful season. The season lasts for 50 days, ending at Pentecost. This gives us ample time to reflect on what it could possibly mean to say and what it could possibly mean to dare to believe that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. May the newness of life, the fullness of life, 
eternal life which Easter announces. Come to abide in our hearts and influence our ways, our community, and our world. A happy Easter to all of you.